finally, nothing fancy, delivering on the promise to do some tabletop reviews of some high quality flashlight options. I've had a lot of requests both from professional contacts and my jobs, also from guys uh, in the Nut and Fancy project from around the world. My subscribers who have contacted me saying, dude, you got to do some flashlight reviews. Here they are. Now, let's get this out of the way. I am not the end-all expert with flashlights. There are guys that are much more knowledgeable about these lighting products than I am. They devote their lives to it. They're called flashaholics. They know every specification. They know the burn times, the throws, the different variances, and all the LEDs. Everything. Every specific model make. Hey, rock on. More power to you. I, I do not know it to that level. However, you will find that I'm fairly competent in the details of these lights. I'll hit most of the specifics that most people will care about, and especially from a user perspective, whether it's tactical or outdoor user or any type of user, I think I'm going to cover the stuff that you're going to dig. And I'm going to keep it on a level that's interesting and not bogged down in the details that I think most of my subscribers and viewers maybe won't be interested in. Let's just keep it real. First off, I'm going to refer you to my Shedding Some Light video. Right there's the link. In that video, I covered the philosophy of use and also all the many considerations which you should take, uh, be aware of that this new lighting technology delivers to us. Uh, in versatility, capabilities, weight, size, all that other stuff. It needed its own video so my viewers could refer to it. Enough said about that. I can't roll it into a specific flashlight review. It's just too much. I'm going to attempt to do this in one segment. Good luck, huh? There's so much to talk about. <clears throat> really, there is. If I can quit coughing, too. I've been coughing all night, too. One of the things I showed you in my Shedding Some Light video is this standard of, to many people, maybe not flashaholics, but normal folks consider the double D-cell mag light the standard by which other lights should be judged. Is it brighter? Is it Does it burn longer? Is it more effective than perhaps this light? This has been a good light for a lot of people. Police officers, homeowners, hikers, outdoorsmen, farmers, you name it. A lot of people have loved this light. And it still is a good light. I specifically like it for home use because it is large, easy to find in the dark, and weight and size generally in home use is not a consideration. With some police officers, they like that size and weight because they've knocked some bad guys upside the head with it. Bam! Guess what? That's what they had in their hand when they were attacked, and the mag light served a purpose quite nicely, decking the bad guy right upside the temple. Now, if that's a factor for you, maybe this larger light will be good. However, for most of us users, the reduction in bulk and the reduction in weight is a very good thing, and it opens up capabilities in our systems, just like I said in shedding some light. I.e., since we shed 21 ounces versus these two lights, heck, that's 21 ounces. Now I can carry food, maybe water, ammunition if the, it's a tactical situation, maybe another knife, all kinds of things, fishing gear. So sometimes bigger is not better when it comes to flashlights. Now, that being said, it also has a lot of other disadvantages compared to this newer technology, Phoenix L2D, which I'll cover in the talking points, like it doesn't, it lacks digital regulation on the lighting, uses a much bigger power source, la di da di da Let's get going. Size and weight on the L2D, what is it? Well, with lighter weight lithium power, or lithium batteries, they are lighter weight than the alkaline or nickel metal hydride variety, this thing weighs only 3.2 ounces. That is amazing. <clears throat> and it's very ergonomic. Notice how slim that barrel is. The barrel, by the way, is just under 6 inches, about 5 and 3 quarter inches. And that long and slender barrel in my use of the Phoenix L2D, I have come to totally dig. That's because you can grasp it easily, find it in a pocket more easily than you can the shorter lights. Also, if you are maybe a marine type, recon type, <coughs> excuse me, that's wearing dogness is coming in. I gotta close this door real quick. Bear with me. Hold on, dog. Stay out. Everyone's partying downstairs, so I gotta keep it quiet. Anyways, if you're a marine con recon type, maybe a pilot that's wearing a flight suit, 
then this will fit right in the knife pocket. Snap your lanyard right over the snap, really easily retrieved, awesome. So size, super light for what it does. The weight, uh, I'm sorry, the weight, super light for what it does. The size, very slender, really nice. How's the construction on this? Super high quality, and you shouldn't expect anything less uh, with today's higher end lights. Higher end for most people is $50 on up. It's got that hard coated anodized finish on it. Will chip. Here's an OD version. Love that coloration, by the way. Look how cool that is. That's a limited edition OD L2D. It's a mouthful. And, yeah, there's a chip on it from the use that I had. I forgot where I dropped it. I think I was out on a tactical night shoot, dropped it on some concrete. Bing! Chipped it. Just makes it look cooler. But, overall, that anodized finish is really tough, and it's going to be durable. O-ring sealed, like many of the quality lights are, have been for years. Enough said about that. Now, that will get talked to its water resistance, and it meets what's called an IPX-8 standard. What that means is something along the lines of 12, uh, actually 24, no, I'm sorry, 12 feet for 24 hours under static water pressure, the light is waterproof. Now, that's static waterproof. Well, static, I can't speak, static waterproofness. If we start swishing it around, that's dynamic water pressure, then it changes. But I think for most users, Anywhere from zero to six feet, no matter what you're doing with a light, it's probably going to be waterproof. You want a dive light, get a dive light. Probably not the Phoenix L2D, but pretty darn waterproof. Glass, not a plastic lens, and it has an AR coating on it. I think that's anti-reflective coating. So that glass lens is durable too. And you'll be amazed at how much heat that those Cree LEDs can put out, uh, at least on turbo mode. They will get hot. Therefore, a glass lens is probably totally necessary for that as well. Let's talk about beam dispersion on that too. Oh, one thing on construction I want to show you. It does come with a lanyard and I have found in my use these little lanyards are going to shred on you. See how that one's starting to fray and shred as it goes through the little re lanyard retention hole there? The way I fix that really quick is I put a stainless steel split ring on it from a fishing uh, fishing kit. I buy these separately. You can buy them at Walmart or any fishing outlet store. Clip that sucker on there. It's kind of hard to thread through, but once you do, attach your lanyard to that because that has rounded edges and it won't cut your lanyard. Then I use some military nylon cord there for a different lanyard on this OD version. That lanyard will never break, but the one that comes with it eventually will. And here's an, another example. This is off the OD one. Totally shredded on me. Okay, just enough said. But overall construction, outstanding. Beam dispersion. Could do a whole video on this, seriously. Now, there's guys that devote their whole lives to studying the beam patterns on these newer flashlights. Uh, in a rare moment, I'm going to refer you to an excellent forum, and that is Candle Power Forums, which has some really knowledgeable dudes on it that do just that. If you want to find out the specifics of runtime, beam patterns, you know, lot varieties of the LEDs, you know, every, you know, specification of lights that preceded the L2D, then uh, go there. There's a lot of information. But here's Nut and Fancy's take on beam dispersion. I am kind of picky on my beams, I'll be honest with you. I said as much in my shedding some light video with this light. And that is the mag light. Again, this is just an example. We could use a variety of lights to show the problems that many of them have. Look at the halos around here. Now, this mag light is adjustable, supposedly, for focusing the beam. But look at what a nightmare that beam pattern is. It's just garbage. And it's because it's just full of all kinds of artifacts. And that it, artifacts are being shadows, dark thing, you know, dark spots like that. And the spill beam is imprecise and inconsistent. Contrast it against that of the L2D with its textured reflector. Look at that. I don't even know what mode I'm in. Let's see. Heck, I was just in low mode. There I'm in high. Look at that spill beam. The spill beam is the exterior portion, how concentric it is, how useful it is. Some guys will get really picky and say there's a halo there. I, don't, I do not detect that at all. And then we have the central culminated focused portion of the beam which can throw out to distance and this thing can throw effectively to around 50 meters some guys will say no nah, it throws a lot better than that or a lot shorter than that but to me around 50 meters is where this light 
pretty much loses its effectiveness for identifying great detail on your subject. That's just me. Again, your mileage may vary. But look at how clean that beam is. No artifacts, nothing. Now, if we went with a smooth reflector like some other versions use, then you're going to have a longer throw. In other words, it may gain some distance. However, you might be susceptible to more artifacts like shadows and halos and stuff like that. Therefore, they texture the beam just like an orange peel. You can see it in there. Works pretty darn good. How about the brightness of this light? Well, it's amazing. Again, keep in mind, this is just two AA batteries powering this sucker. But the brightness speaks to what kind of LEDs it utilizes. And it's these ones right here. See on the back of the package? This is an L1D package, but same. Let me show you the L2D just to be consistent. So it's using Cree 7090. That's the type of LED, XRE LEDs. And this is a premium Q5 version of the L2D. There's been other versions, won't get into that. Those are super quality LEDs. They're energy efficient. They have a high output level when they are powered correctly. As long as you don't underpower them, they're going to deliver some amazing brightness. Specifically, 180 lumens for about 2.4 hours is what the manufacturer says for the L2D Q5. Again, if you go to Q, uh, Candle Power Forums, there's some dudes there that did some burn times with them. And they get down and dirty with exactly what this thing can do. I'm not going to get into that. For most users, suffice it to say, in turbo mode, and I'm going to show you the different modes here in a bit, it really cranks it out. 180 lumens for a double A battery powered flashlight. That's amazing. That's the technology I was speaking to in my shedding some light video. Wow. Now if we bump it down, excuse me, to general mode, that's about 12 lumens. It can power on for 55 hours. Freaking amazing. The throw I already talked about. I'm saying about 50 meters. I guess this is now now is as good a time as any to talk about the different modes of the Phoenix L2D. Real quick, by the way, this is not the only quality flashlight out there. Uh, I think as of the beginning of 2009, Phoenix is doing a lot of things right. It's a cost-effective light that puts out a lot of brightness, has useful modes on it, but there's other good lights as well. Maybe the Nightcore series would be a good example, specifically the D10, which is a single AA powered light. The D20 would be the competitor to this L2D. That's a double A powered light. However, it's bigger and bulkier than this light, which to me, nothing fancy, is a big deal. You know I'm big on lightweight. Love that. And compact whenever I can. Getting back to the modes though. So the Phoenix L2G, great light, but here's how the modes work in a nutshell. If you take your bezel, this thing rotates. You rotate it to the left, okay? And you don't have to rotate it far to the left, just a little bit, maybe about a half an inch. Then you push your little clicky switch there you go, you're in general mode. You tap your back switch just a little bit and it'll take it up one brightness level. Tap it again, yet another brightness level. Tap it once more and it enters what's called SOS mode and it's doing Morse code SOS. Not really sure how effective that, uh, not effective but useful that is, but hey, it's there. Okay, so, and you tap it again, you enter low mode again. Now to get to turbo mode, you can do this with a light on or off, we rotate the bezel counterclockwise when it's facing away from us. Bam! There's turbo, turbo mode. That's the one where it's 2.4 hours of runtime. Now, the runtime will vary with what type of batteries you're going to be using. If you're going to be using lithium batteries, which I recommend, uh, the runtime's pretty decent. I think that the runtime is slightly more with 2650 milliamp nickel metal hydride batteries. So, and your alkaline batteries is going to be less. I recommend these lithium batteries. Uh, they are expensive. Now, let me caveat that. I recommend the lithium batteries if it's in a law enforcement role or maybe a tactical role where you absolutely have to have your light work for you. If you are using your light on a daily basis and maybe not in cold conditions, then maybe a high quality nickel metal hydride battery like these in a loops are good options. I love the Inaloop too because for a nickel metal hydride battery it retains its charge over time instead of discharging without being used which is a common problem with nickel metal hydride batteries. Getting back to the turbo mode though, um, roughly 2.4 hours give or take some depending um, 
And again, in cold conditions, I really like those lithium batteries. And you saw me use this light in my Lean 2 series of videos when I used it as a lantern. Remember that? Worked pretty darn good then. Use it in turbo mode for at least an hour. The manufacturer says, hey, don't leave it in turbo mode for too long. You'll overheat your head. Uh, I don't think that's much of a consideration, really. I, I did it, and it didn't do anything. Even if it lessens the life of the LEDs, it's not a huge factor. Because the LEDs rated for 50,000 hours. That's a lot. Anyways, turbo mode, we can go into strobe mode. Do that again. So we just tap our switch for strobe mode. That is if you want to have a disco in your room or something, you know. Put on the Donna Summer and hit the strobe mode, dude, seriously. Tap it again, it should go right back to turbo mode. Okay, so that's the modes of the L2D, down and dirty. There's probably a lot more videos that show it in depth. Enough to say on that, though. Runtime, talked about it. Um, overall, though, I, I recommend the lithium batteries. I know they're expensive, but they last and last. And in cold applications, they are superior. Talked about the modes of switchology. Simplicity. There's um, some controversy over what's better. The Nightcore series of lights uses what's called a piston drive system. I'm not going to go in depth on that, but it does not utilize a clicky switch. I like clicky switches, especially in tactical applications. If I were to throw this on a gun, which you can do, how you doing? Here's an L1D on the end of a Ruger Charger pistol. Works pretty good, huh? I like that tactile feel of the switch, knowing that it's coming on and coming off. Very useful. Now, especially if I have gloves or my fingers are numb, like they were up there in the mountains in those videos I showed you. The Lean 2 videos and also the snowy fire making vids. Um, I like that tactile, knowing that the switch is on and off. Also, it's pretty darn simple. I showed you the modes. Once you practice with it, it may seem a little complicated now, but once you practice with it, you'll say, you know what? That makes absolute sense. Um, the Night Course series of lights are a little bit more complicated in their switchology. And they can have like a hundred different levels of illumination um, with a piston drive. And actually, you just tap it. I, I forget all the things that it does. There are some vids out there that show you if you're interested. Uh, you just push and hold to adjust brightness. And also, it remembers the last brightness level. A lot of cool things. And I'm sure they're great lights. But concentrating on the Phoenix L2D, the modes are useful. I like having those three different, actually four different brightness levels. The strobe, eh, take or leave that. I don't know if that's really tactically advantageous. Excuse me. I guess the idea is to blind your adversary. Haven't tried that. I'm not sure how effective it would be. And simplicity won't take you long to get really good at this, uh, playing around with it. And that's what I recommend. When you get this light, spend some time with it. Uh, going through all the modes where it becomes second nature and you get your muscle memory down. I'm going to show you this OD1. Man, I love that coloration too. This is limited, by the way. If you want to get an L2D, these are like going bye-bye right now. So I think Phoenix uh, Store has some left. Phoenix-store.com, I think it is. Uh, again, that will change in the future. How about versatility? Man, again, a whole video could be made on this, and I addressed a lot of that and shedding some light video. First off, as I showed you here, the Phoenix L2D can replace a lot of different lighting products. It can replace your headlamp, your bike light, your large D-cell flashlight, and also your lantern. Let's start off with lantern. Showed you this already, but real quick, go to turbo mode, turn that sucker on, and you have a very effective lantern. I also showed you the lantern capabilities of these Phoenix lights in my tactical shooting clinic at the end of last summer. Remember that? Great light. Now, what makes this particular lantern or uh, diffuser tip more effective than other ones? Well, one is the quality of plastic. This is very high quality plastic that Phoenix uses. Very well done. And also, it's just a bright light. And the design of that and how it captures and diffuses the beam is very effective. I have seen some other diffuser tips on lights, and they really weren't life-changing to me. But this one is. I showed you the light wand that can go on the tip of that. Also, there is, running out of time already, a red filter you can put on there. I'm not going to show you. There's a red filter right there. So if you're in a tactical application, maybe a pilot, throw that on there. Preserve your light vi night vision. No problem. 
Another thing that I alluded to really briefly earlier is I think you can use the Phoenix lights, even the L2D as a weapons light. This one again is an L1D, the single cell version of it, and it's placed in a scope ring on a short section of tactical rail that the user mounted underneath the charger. Very effective. I don't think uh, it's affected by recoil, and with that tactical, i.e. clicky, switch, very effective. And you can go momentary on too if you want. Uh, same thing. Track record, running out of time. Five months of use, I have found the Phoenix L2D to be very durable and basically everything they advertise it to be. Multi modes, every mode it has, maybe not the SOS mode, uh, but all the other modes are pretty darn useful. Like I said, if you wanted to do a disco party, stroke function rocks. So track record, I think it will continue to prove itself in the years that come. I don't, I've never talked to anybody that has used these Phoenix lights has come away disappointed. Okay, they're just awesome. Cost and value uh, depends. I all again, I hate to say exactly how much cost, uh, how much cost you can expect. Around fifty dollars, a little bit more, a little bit less, but that is a lot of light for that type of money. Again, like I addressed in my shedding some light video, it cost means different things to different people. But if you want a system changing light, something that really is going to reduce your loadout weight. Be very compact to carry. Uh, and by the way, you could use it as a Kubaton still. It's not as effective as this one, but better than nothing. Um, but lightweight, compact, easy to carry. Great burn times on these Phoenix L2Ds. And durable and waterproof. I think $50 is money well spent. So that says it's a high value item. And it sure surpasses a lot of other lighting products out there. Thank heavens Phoenix came to the market because guess what? They have revolutionized lighting and no longer does Surefire have a lock on these little tactical lights. Totally out of time. Highly recommended. Thanks guys. Phoenix L2D. Nothing fancy. Out.